Uh, with that being said, the uh, meeting call to order. We'll go to item number two. Consider for approval a, res a revision to the city's emergency paid sick leave policy originally implemented on March 16th, 2020 and updated on March, uh, I'm sorry, April 30th, 2020. Um, and Mr. Bemke, I think you had, uh, you wanted to bring this. I did, I did ask for this to come back and I think we've addressed one issue with, with the extra week. Um, the other question I had was um, essential versus non-essential employees and um, the designation, why the designation. Um, I, I, think, I think this is a good start. I don't think we're done with this yet. I think as we go through the process, and we're, it's a learning curve for everybody, a big learning curve here for everybody. But um, I just want to make sure our employees are left whole and healthy when this is done. So um, that's my goal in this. So, Morgan, if you have to, if you would like to, or whoever's. Um, so I can just explain how we expanded upon the policy in this revi revised um, document. So this policy is available to all staff members. This is separate from any um, federal stuff put out there in which, like you referred, there's some exempt employees mm -hmm. to that. This one is available to all employees. Um, the items that I really only added like about three um, additional things to kind of cover uh, some specific scenarios that have come up and that have learned that you know maybe we just never even anticipated the first go around on this. Um, one would be that. Um, this is number two on the uh, list here, and that is self-isolation because an employee or an employee's household member is considered to be high risk. Um, with that, I recommend that uh, we have the employee provide us some sort of proper documentation, uh, you know, showing the need for self-isolation because of a um, household member or themselves being at high risk um, to need this, you know, maybe the full two weeks leave or whatever they end up taking. Um, the next one is just, um, well, I originally had it worded that self-isolation due to possible exposure to COVID-19. Um, I recommend just a slight change in language to that in which it is, um, the employee is in self-isolation due to a household family member being exposed to COVID-19. So maybe that family member has been notified that they were exposed. Well, now they've already been by the family member, so the whole family member is trying to take precautionary steps. Um, that's kind of the reason why I added that in there. And then um, number 10, we added in here, we were already um, allowing this, I kind of just put it in here to make it part of the policy, which was um, if staff members have a reduction in hours, they can supplement those that reduction in hours um, with this paid leave. And I think that last one was was added at the, um, at the, the one that you that they did um, approve on April 30th, that number 10 was, yeah, okay. so, but it, but right, it was, um, yeah. Good. Good. I, I guess I'm, I'm happy with what we have so far here. If I'm, I would like to think that this is fluid and we can change it if we have to, or I mean, as, as things come up, right? I guess the only thing else regarding this is, um, and we talked about, Morgan and I talked about this a little bit, is and I don't think we need a policy. I think just some guidelines on the, the cleaning, the disinfecting, um, just, just at some general policies, reminders, and so we're consistent throughout our departments. So, uh, Mr. Becky, you were the one that was championing 
the changes on this, you're satisfied with that. Does anybody else have any further discussion or concerns or questions on this particular policy in the room? No, I don't see anybody. Uh, Mr. Rayom, do you have any questions, concerns, comments with this? No. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Zerflu, do you have any questions, concerns, comments? Negative. Mr. Young, do you have any? Is Mr. Young's mic muted or unmuted? No, I do not. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Young. So with that being said, um, I will entertain a motion to approve the revisions of uh, this uh, city's emergency paid sick leave policy. So moved. Mr. Bemke um, makes a motion to approve the, the changes. Uh, I'll second. Mr. Zerflu uh, seconds the changes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against, the uh, motion carries uh, three to zero in the affirmative. Um, we will go on to item number three, update the hiring status of the vacant human resources director position. And uh, Ms. Bogle, I'll give you an update on that. Wonderful. Um, the individual that we're working with, the Charles River Group, um, has to date made 89 contacts um, in the government uh, public sector area. Um, he's done folk. 18 phone screens um, and 10 full phone interviews. Uh, at this point, he has gotten a resume. Um, several of the individuals are intrigued about the position but just don't feel like they're in a place right now where they want to relocate. Um, really, we're in uncertain times with this whole COVID and with, with everything else that um, his comment and my comment is it's you know, people just, that there's so much on the unknown, so he's still continuing to um, look. Uh, I told him we need to stay with public sector experience uh, because it's just so different. We've, we've had that discussion. Um, so he's expanded out, um, has talked with now individuals um, more in the Madison area and the Fox cities. So he's giving me updates every couple of days. Um, the one candidate that he did get a resume on, um, their comp, they've got 15 years of experience. They're probably over-experienced uh, for, for what we're looking for, but uh, we put right now that step six as the maximum of the salary. Uh, but I've, I've told him not to rule candidates out and that if we get some good candidates, eight to ten years of experience and strong leadership experience, those are, are the candidates that we want to talk with. So he's he's really pounding the pavement and, and we kind of put a challenge to him uh, because of the requirement of the public sector. Um, so they, um, that's really where, where he's at right now. Um, I've told him it's got to be the right person. Don't just give us candidates to give us candidates. So. I'm going to filter and screen anybody after he's done that just to make sure. Um, I'll give that information to Shane when I get that and, and, and we'll talk about it. So so then with that being said, um, and, and the HR director position is a vital uh, position for our organization, but in your opinion, we've got time right. to find the right candidate. Right. We don't want to push it. Well, and I, I said, you know, as long as you'll continue to allow me to work with you, we've got a resource and you've got Morgan and Sarah that are, are doing a great job uh, keeping the day-to-day -day going. So I, I've agreed to be able to be a resource for you as long as that position's vacant. Um, so. Perfect. Wonderful. Yeah. Cool. Does anybody have any questions, concerns in the room? Uh, Mr. Rayom, do you have any questions, concerns? Mr. Zerflu? Oh, no, I don't know. Mr. Young? I don't hear it. Do you? Uh, nothing that can't wait. Or for or, uh, for the this particular item? Correct, yes. Okay. Um, I, we do have some HR questions, but a director would be helpful, but... He can only do what he can do. So sure, sure. 
Uh, with that being said, uh, we will go, since there was no action on this particular item, we will go on to item number four, update on employee recruitment. And, and Ms. Poggle or Ms. Tauschik, uh do you guys have any, I, I, what I want to do is keep this on here just in case so that it's, it's one of those where it's a recurring agenda item uh, to kind of talk about you know, what, what we've got going, if there's positions that need to be filled, it'll almost kind of be, <laughs> it'll be one of those carrots to maybe the mayor's office saying, hey, if there is positions, let's not put them on the back burner, let's let's look at it and, and fill uh, vital positions through the organization. So. Right. Right now we're, we're doing great. Sarah's been actively recruiting for the Aquatic Center, um, so there's a lot of people that are aligned, lined up for that. We have the assessor office position filled, that person isn't going to start now until May, June. June. Um, we delayed that just in light of the fact that, you know, to try to come on site and, and train. So that set um, last council, last HR committee uh, in council, they approved the design engineer position. So that's getting posted. So, you know, overall, um, Sarah's been busy, but positions are filled and there really aren't any vacancies you know that we're not actively recruiting for the HR director is probably the difficult one right now so sure wonderful anybody got any questions or concerns on that the aquatic center is fully staffed assuming we can open um, I I believe I pretty close. yeah if not yes I think there's a few more interviews um, that have to be done yet, but for the most part, last I talked with Sarah, I didn't confirm with her today, but I would say we're probably 90%. Mm -hmm. Good. Wonderful. Mr. Rayom, do you have anything for this uh, employee recruitment at all? Generic kind of line item that I have on here? Not really, no, not now. Wonderful. Joe Zerflu, do you have anything? No, I don't. Mr. Young, do you have anything? I do not, no. Wonderful, thank you. So then with that, with no action item on this, we'll go on to item number five. The committee may move to go into closed session under section 19.85, a subparent one, subparent E of the Wisconsin statutes, which reads deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business when our competitive or bargaining reasons require closed session. Uh, in closed session, the committee will receive an update on the um, IAFF contract status. And just for clarification, what does IAFF stand for? It's the firefighters, but is it the International American Firefighters Association, Association of Firefighters? Um, so, do I have a motion to enter into closed session? I'll make a motion. Do I? I guess I'll make the second uh, to go into go into closed session. And with that, we need to have a roll call vote. So, Kubishek, I, Bemke, I, uh, Zeraflu, I. All right, we are now entered into closed session. You're not